It is the summer of 2012. I'm smack bang in the middle of my first startup. It is lecherously called Pechan Agri. My friends uh, thought I was pursuing an older, older passion, pornography. Thankfully, it wasn't the case. I was selling beautifully illustrated notebooks through the length and breadth of the country. It was a great time. It was the first startup I was rushing with adrenaline. Happy faces, that's me at the end smiling. It was a great time. Uh, wide eyed romantic there, my face. Uh, perfect recipe for disaster. Yeah? When, when uh, half-baked dreams come together, sometimes there's friction and, and uh, you need to part ways sometimes and that's what happened. Perfectionism sometimes is slow death. My partner wanted to build Bechan Agri into a beautiful curated studio for fantastic work and I wanted it to be the largest merchandise brand in the country. That never happened. We had to amicably part ways and I again took the road, road lesser travel. But you know what? This time around, there was no road. It was now the summer of 2013. I was struggling to find a new idea to pursue. I worked for a year and a half uh, in a job and the idea of shuffling from my seat at 6 p.m. every evening was not a good idea. I never enjoyed the fact that people at 6 p.m. sharp started moving and saying, oh, no, we got that, we got time over here, etc. And that was disturbing. So I was hell-bent on not taking a job, which is not the wisest thing to do, by the way. But there was, of course, the community. And <laughs> I'm a Gujarati guy, so the idea of not making material wealth is a very unnerving idea for the community. There is always this looming presence. <laughs> so, so <laughs> there wasn't an idea in my universe that you could struggle to create art. Art is something you buy. Right? So, uh, having said that, I had already put my feet on a slightly more difficult road. And it was then when the internet became my new best friend. There were startups that I followed. I was very, very, as a writer, it gave me great joy that my word could now reach out to so many people. I was an active blogger. I used Reddit, Twitter, Facebook. Creatively, this was a very satisfying time in my life. But something had to be done, right? I had to, I had to keep that section of the society slightly happy. So, besides writing for myself, I also wrote, so this is something I would write on Facebook and on blogs, and I would get a share of comments and likes. It was very fulfilling. I would also write for startups, and I would write for websites. I would bring some bread home, and. My parents would be slightly more relieved. So that, while I was doing this, I arrived at a rule. That is, when your personal equity is a little lower, you create an organization. Because then, my friends could no longer call me saying, hey, website ka orders likhe de dena. Or they couldn't call me and say, mere bank ka beta ho, please like, thank you or congratulations, don't likhe de. Those were the things I was getting offered without any monetary compensation. So I said, hey, look, I'm now an organization called Not Like That. There was a nod of approval as well, I hope. <laughs> and so Not Like That allows me to throw a rate card at every little content proposition I got. I just throw a rate card. You know, beta peta ho hai. I had a card for every content offering. But of course, this was a stop gap, right? This was a stop gap arrangement in which I didn't have to take up a job and make some money. But this wasn't what I wanted to pursue. At this time, though, 
as a writer, something was changing. The internet landscape was slightly shifting. And suddenly, everyone and their granddaughters and uncles and aunties and moms and dads were on smartphones. So there was a time when I used to get panned for being on a smartphone all the time, but then suddenly, my parents were spending two hours every morning on WhatsApp, sending those religious SMSs <laughs> and WhatsApp. So suddenly, my timeline started looking like this. As a writer, when on Facebook there was a reasonable share of space for the written word for state subjects, suddenly stuff like this started coming up. It was mildly disturbing. <laughs> and then this happened. It got more difficult to uh, it was difficult to fathom that cats got more likes and shares than lovely poetry that I would pen off. But you either adapt or you die. So I said, okay, let's live in this world. Then, this happened. This is when it really got to a point that I can't take it. You know, I, I had made my peace with the other gender taking selfies and I quite liked them also, the duck faces, the poses. But this... <laughs> Sorry, but got very, very difficult. I tried, okay. Look, as a writer, I said I need to try. I tried creating memes. This is my homage to Swedish counterpart. <laughs> <laughs> I tried comic strips. <laughs> and so I got very angry. I started ranting. So that didn't work either. 21 likes on friends, one comment is from a relative, one is like my myself. <laughs> <laughs> this was my work, guys. It was very disturbing. March 3rd, 2013 is when I got this on my WhatsApp in the morning. I get this every day now. It's a part of my family group. Uh, <laughs> mom, dad, auntie, Mosa, everyone sends me now. But this was in its infancy, the, one of the first. I said something has to be done. As a writer, I either must look for an alternate profession or do something. So, I realized that all these things respected attention. They were doing something to attention. Because people couldn't read long form, people couldn't read uh, books, people couldn't read long articles, I myself couldn't read it. And that was disturbing, but that was the truth. And I had to participate in that truth, right? Not about tools. Good insight, not about tools. So, what I liked was Twitter. I liked Twitter because it was 140 characters, it was brief, it was to the point. And people used their head before putting something out because you had to put it in 140 characters. So, I liked Twitter. Twitter was nice. Then, I like the idea of flash fiction. Flash fiction was good because Twitter has too many opinions. I didn't have too many opinions. I didn't want to tell people I went to the bazaar, the bathroom, the grocery, you know, I went to my mama's daughter's wedding. I didn't want to say those things. So Twitter was not friendly for me. I like flash fiction because I can tell stories. And this is a classic from Hemingway. For sale, baby shoes, never won, never won. That's a six word, Incredible story. So I like flash fiction. I knew this I could not escape. So that's a reality I swallowed. Photographs. We were in a world which is increasingly photo and video led. And collaboration. I didn't want to do this alone because the moment I told this to my fellow writer friend, they all said, yeah man, this is the same bloody problem. Let's do something about it. And so I pulled in all my friends. 18 fantastic, prolific writers from across the country, friends, friends of friends, people who really love the written word, I brought them together. And because we are on the internet, it allows for incredible conversation. And it's because of a conversation of this nature, I'm here today in front of you, representing my team and talking to you, because some of you love what we do. And so, Twitter, flash fiction, photos, collaboration and conversation, they all came together to create what we now know as Terribly Tiny Tales. And this is the first tale that I wrote. Then I used a 
feather to write poems on your back, you wouldn't stop moving. Now I use it as a quill. Not once have my words moved you. This was the first. One morning, he left and built himself a fortress. You can't touch me now. Determined, she became very fisted. Whipped for drinking from the well, Dalit disappeared. Soon the water went foul, the upper class first feet down in the well, a rocking corpse mocked. Pithy, beautiful, 140 character stories that have resonated with over a million readers now on a week on week basis. Crazy bird she was, only flew when no one watched, none could keep her, all failed to train her. Funny name she had, tiny. Soon at the temple called Lankhele, a god will retire, and every Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Sikh, and Bhakti will have a poorer religion. Small <laughs> messages, stories that have moved so many people. There's a tiny tale for everyone, we realize, and that's what's been encouraging for us. We, we did a tale on Peshawar. This is beautiful, guys. There is a gun on my back and books on yours are how each of us feels what the other carries. <laughs> right. Like stay as a woman, so powerful. And then there is what we did for Amnesty International on the 30th anniversary of the Bhopal gas tragedy. The night of December 2, 1984, changed meanings, progress led to a standstill. Union did mean togetherness, and plants made people choke. These little words have allowed us to say so many things. We are doing something now because we are a startup and need to make some money. We are doing something for Max Life Insurance as well. There are some stories with them. And then there is a community of 8,000 writers. He fell for her smile. It was a 13 story fall. <laughs> so, so, that is our hope, right? Our hope and our prayer is that tomorrow, Tiny will be the next big thing. And then, Someday, maybe, a whole bunch from my community. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.